Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, and thank you, Miko. That was a super interesting talk. Um, love, love to hear you speak and just your context on the whole industry. Um, so yeah, I mean, where, uh, where do we start? So I do, I do have a few slides. I mean, I'm kind of just going to use them, you know, as, as background context. So you can either pull them up or not. Um, it's fine either way. Um, but yeah, I guess, I don't know, should I start with some background, Jeff? How have you uh, been running these? Oh, uh, background is great. Yeah, I'm sorry. Background is good because uh, I, I, there is no bio there. So yes, yeah, so, but background would be fine. Awesome. Vanessa, are you going to say something? Oh, I was just going to just give a broader uh, context for Gitcoin. It just I, we have a lot of uh, developers in the audience that are from the Web2 side. And I just wanted to say that Gitcoin has been uh, really the leading platform for bringing developers to Web3. And I know you're going to give a great overview on how they can engage and what they can do. But for history's sake in crypto, Gitcoin has been the central point for folks to learn and access and participate in new networks. So we're just really happy to have them here with us today. Awesome, thank you, thank you so much for the kind uh, kind background info. Um, so yeah, so I'm Connor, I, uh, I, I'm at Gitcoin. Um, I kind of, I have a lot of titles, so I won't go into the title stuff. Um, but yeah, but what Gitcoin basically does is, um, you know, we provide funding for open source developers and open source teams. Um, primarily or first in the Ethereum space, but now we've kind of expanded out to a lot of other blockchain ecosystems. Uh, I guess for some background on myself. So I, I studied computer science, economics. Uh, I got into the, the blockchain kind of Bitcoin space, you know, in like almost 10 years ago now, nine years ago, um, and was just drawn to it ever since. Uh, I started working at Consensus in 2015. Um, and that was kind of where you know, everyone in the Ethereum space was sort of drawn to in those days, um, you know, which which led to some good and, and maybe some bad things as well. Um, but I had a great experience there, started working on the Gitcoin team, which was incubated at consensus in, uh, I started in 2019. And so I've been with Gitcoin ever since. Uh, we've since spun out into our own uh, entity. Uh, we actually just launched a DAO last spring. Uh, we're working to decentralize a lot of our a lot of our products, uh, our, our platform, and pretty much our entire community. Um, so yeah, that's some background on myself. To to get into Gitcoin a bit, so um, I, I don't want this all to be about Gitcoin either, uh, but I think it helps provide some context for like what I know and what I've seen in this space. And uh, like you said, Vanessa, like this this may even fit better with um, uh, yesterday's theme of like Web two to Web three. Um, but I think, you know, it all kind of blends together and we, you know, we try to bring new people into the space, but provide opportunities for people who are already in the space to, you know, get funding for their project or to join other projects, um, and, and things like that. So, you know, part of our mission is that, you know, the future is going to be decentralized. Uh, the future of work is going to be remote and flexible. Um, and, you know, open source is going to drive a lot of the, you know, economics and, and, and businesses of the future. Uh, and so Gitcoin started out with a pretty simple bounties platform. Basically, you could, you know, create a, uh, a GitHub issue and fund it with Ethereum or any ERC-20 um, and find, you know, contributors to, to work on your project um, or find projects to con contribute to and get paid for. Um, and really, we were just looking for a way to, you know, help fix like the traditional problem of there not a, not being enough funding in open source, um, and you know, help ecosystems and projects, uh, you know, grow their communities, um, whether they're a DAO, a company, uh, et cetera. Um, and it's, it's kind of interesting to see how Gitcoin has grown over the few years because, you know, we started with, you know, this kind of simple bounties platform. We started doing more uh, hackathons, incubators, you know, everything virtually and accessible online. Um, and, you know, since then, we've, we've kind of delved into this idea of quadratic funding via Gitcoin grants, which I'll, I'll talk to uh, a little bit more in a couple minutes. Um, all right. So let's see where we are in the slides. Um, all right, I'm, I'm going to like slide four here, the product flywheel. Um, so like I said, you know, we started as a bounties platform. Uh, we started doing virtual hackathons and events. And we've actually worked with Agoric on a few of these, um, which has been super fun because um, they're an awesome team and, and, you know, have some really cool technology. Um, but yeah, with the hackathons, like we, that part of the, the business, you know, really ramped up during, you know, the early pandemic days when all of a sudden everything was going virtual. 
um, and, and online. And we had already been running some virtual hackathons, but all of a sudden, you know, everyone's events were virtual. And so um, while it was for unfortunate reasons, I think it really provided a, a interesting way that people all over the world could now participate in more events that they couldn't in the past. Um, and so as a result, we tried to make things feel like they were a lot more, you know, like, like human to human. Uh, we did a lot more, you know, workshops and educational sessions. Uh, we tried to help people, you know, form teams and, and you know, meet other developers that, that they could potentially work with. Um, and so that kind of, you know, helped form the, the core part of that product. Uh, we have Kernel, which actually has sort of spun out into its own thing from Gitcoin, which is basically an accelerator program. Uh, I think there's a lot of notable people that have joined these these kernel blocks in the space. Um, and it's a great way for, you know, Web2 developers to kind of, you know, dip their toes in and, and get started with, uh, with Web3. Um, and I guess a quick caveat is that I don't think you need to be a developer to get you know, involved in, in the Gitcoin and the blockchain ecosystem as a whole. Um, you know, even our hackathons, uh, the Kernel Accelerator, or even the Gitcoin DAO, um, we're now seeing, you know, people come in who are designers or, uh, you know, more product focused people or, you know, HR and lawyers. And I, I think the same is true for all over the, the you know, blockchain space right now is it was very developer focused in the early years. Um, but, you know, it's this whole blooming industry now and there's opportunity for, for all types of roles to be fit, uh, to be filled. Um, and so we need, you know, people that aren't necessarily technical, but still have an interest. Like we, we need those people to, to join and contribute as well. Um, and OK, so I want to get into Gitcoin grants in a second. Um, but I guess before that, just if you are kind of new and breaking into Web3, like, I think there's a lot of distractions, especially right now and, and the way we see kind of market cycles going. Um, it can be very difficult to like figure out where to go or, or what to pay attention to when you're new. Uh, and there's so much going on, but you know, there's all these stuff, things about trading and you know, tokens pumping and NFTs and influencers. Um, and you know, if you're like me, you're in like a hundred different discords and you can't keep up with any of them. Um, and so it's really hard. And I think, you know, some of the some of the ways that we provide, uh, you know, opportunities to get people in are through, you know, bounties and hackathons and just, you know, genuine, you know, interactions via workshops, webinars, you know, things like this um, where you can get to know people. You know, you join the community, you talk to one another. Um, and and yeah, and so I think um, it, it's distracting and daunting at first, but once you really you know, find that that community you're interested in or find that, you know, piece of the technology that really fascinates you. Uh, it's it's a super deep rabbit hole to uh, to go into. Um, but um, OK, yeah, so I know we're like halfway through. I, I want to talk about Gitcoin grants a bit now um, for kind of the rest of the presentation, because I think that's kind of the largest opportunity that we have identified and been focusing on in terms of uh, you know, funding public goods, funding open source, and basically exposing, you know, uh, the rest of the world and maybe non-crypto native people uh, to different mechanisms uh, that aren't necessarily around, you know, pumping a coin or trading NFTs or anything like that. Um, so what is Gitcoin Grants? What is quadratic funding? Um, quadratic funding was basically an idea that, uh, that Vitalik Buterin and Glenn Whale uh, co-authored a paper on. Um, I think about three, three or so years ago, uh, and it's similar to the idea of quadratic voting, right? Where you know a, a group of people can each have multiple votes. Um, they can vote on different uh, proposals or ideas, and they can indicate their their strength of their preference by voting on something multiple times. But the the impact of their vote um, is basically the square root of how many votes they spend on it, which gives people a way to indicate stronger preference towards certain things. Uh, but doesn't outweigh, you know, the the will of the majority over the will of people who might have, you know, a lot of votes or uh, basically more power. And so in the context of funding, um, we use this as a mechanism to help fund projects in initially just in, you know, the blockchain space. But now we're kind of expanding out. Um, and so say, you know, we're doing some some fundraising round uh, for a bunch of, you know, people who are building, uh, you know, Ethereum protocol uh, work or, you know, really any, any blockchain protocol. Um, 
if 100 people donate $1 in support of some grant, um, that's a much stronger indication that that's what the community you know, wishes to fund than if one person donates $100. So in the context of quadratic funding, like two people donating $5 to the same project will earn the same match as one person donating $25 to that project, if that makes sense. Uh, so we've been doing these funding rounds now for, for three years. Um, and I just heard someone come off mute. Is there a question on that? I had a question, but I'll ask it afterwards. Good. Can you continue? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yeah. So, so essentially, what we've been doing is running these uh, matching rounds for grants, where we do this once per quarter. Uh, we raise this matching pool of funds. Um, anyone can open up a grant if they're working on, you know, a project that's open source or can be seen as a public good, um, and they can basically accept donations from the community, and then those donations get matched based on this this algorithm. Uh, and the algorithm, the mechanism of quadratic funding, it aims to be more democratic in that, you know, the wealthiest don't have the biggest say, but the, you know, the majority, the, the, the larger democracy have uh, more of a, the power to, you know, indicate what public goods get funded, um, if that makes sense. So I guess I'll pause there for any questions. No, 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 you, you did answer it. My, my, my question was how, how was it matched and by who? But I, I think you answered that, so thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so that's actually a, a really interesting um, part of it as well. So, you know, in the early days, like we, we did some very small matching rounds. I think Gitcoin Grants round one was a uh, 25K matching pool. Um, and, you know, those funds often came from, you know, like individual donors that wanted to support or, you know, the Ethereum Foundation or, you know, other other foundations that have treasuries that, you know, have grants programs. But part of the um, the issue with grants programs is figuring out, you know, who to fund and who gets to make those decisions. Um, so we started off with these small rounds. Um, they slowly grew to 50K matching pool, 100K matching pool. And after you know a few iterations of this, we actually saw a lot of projects in the ecosystem choosing to give back to those matching pools, um, either because they were you know, making you know, decent revenue in the ecosystem um, and wanted to give back, or maybe they had a large treasury, or in some cases actually, uh, they may have started on Gitcoin grants um, and now have grown up into a full project uh, and they want to kind of give back to, to where they started. So we've done 12 uh, matching rounds so far um, in Gitcoin grants around 12 in December. There was three million dollars total in the matching pool. Um, and we, you know, get donations over the past year or two. We've gotten donations from like, you know, Kraken and Chainlink and you know Uniswap and EPNS and ENS and BadgerDAO and you know a lot of DeFi protocols, a lot of exchanges um, that you know basically want to give back either a portion of their treasury or their revenue to help fund early stage projects or uh, you know just public good projects that don't have any model towards monetization. Um, one one interesting example, I think it's one of my slides, um, is actually with Uniswap. Um, Uniswap was one of our very early uh, Gitcoin grantees, I think in rounds, you know, one or two or three, um, got some of their initial funding that way. Um, you know, eventually, like if a project launches a token or raises VC funds, um, they're no longer eligible for, you know, grant matching and donations. Um, however, Uniswap now kind of has been working with us to, uh, you know, help fund other early stage projects in the ecosystem. And they've actually been doing some some little side pools for uh, grants projects building on Uniswap specifically. Um, so yeah, I think on slide on the sixth slide, like you can kind of see the scale of how this has grown over the 12 rounds. Um, so like I said, round 12, we saw, uh, or we had 3 million in matching, um, and over, over 3 million, I think 3.1 or 3.2 in community donations. And we're seeing the amount of community donations go up significantly. Uh, but also the number of unique donors and uh, unique donations, which is really cool to see. Um, and what we actually have been experimenting with lately, and we did this with round 12, is uh, doing what we call side rounds. So like ecosystem rounds or cause rounds. And so some of these ecosystem rounds were like with Uniswap. Uh, we did one around ZK Tech. We did one with Synthetics. Um, we're basically, you know, grantees that are building projects in those specific ecosystems um, can get matching from, you know, an individual pool for a, a set of smaller grants. And then we did these cause rounds as well. So we did one around, um, you know, climate change prevention, obviously. Um, we did one around advocacy. Uh, so, you know, politics and lobbying. Uh, we did one around um, 
longevity as well. So like life extension. And basically what we found is that this mechanism is a really interesting way to, you know, raise funds for projects that maybe don't have a model to monetize or they're just purely public goods that, you know, are inherently not monetizable. Um, and we want to expand that out from just blockchain and Ethereum to, you know, a lot of these real world use cases. Um, and, you know, I, I love the kind of just mental, you know, experiments of thinking, you know, what does it look like to do this with, you know, tax dollars or, you know, governments or even at a local level, you know, if there's initiatives in your town that you want to fund, like, could you use some mechanisms like this to, uh, to, you know, basically have people vote with their money and, uh, you know, indicate their preferences on where they want public funds to be going while also contributing to, to help build up, you know, treasuries for those initiatives. Um, so, yeah, I've been a bit all over the place, but happy to answer any questions or just talk about how, you know, this relates to you as a developer or opportunities there as well. What are some yeah. of the more common um, ways that you help new developers entering Web3? Because you've been at this for a while now, and so you've had this nice collection of dealing with multiple developers. And are there any key things or pointers that you want to give to people based on that experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd say like, hmm, that's a good question. I mean, in the context of Gitcoin, like, so, you know, we, we kind of like to see our, our, our product suite almost as a flywheel. So like you can join the platform, um, you know, find some bounties, even if they're, you know, hundred dollars or a couple hundred dollar bounties um, and just start doing some work and contributing. And then maybe that leads to you joining the hackathon and building a hackathon project. And then all of a sudden, this is something you want to continue on. Um, and, you know, you can take that project, you can open up a grant for it and then try to get, uh, you know, additional funding in, in these grants rounds. So we'd like to kind of um, help people get through that whole life cycle. But, you know, at a larger scale, it's just about like uh, a willingness to learn um, and to meet other people, because I think, you know, in, in DAOs and in blockchain, like like everyone is well, not everyone, but many people are very friendly. Um, they want to get new people into the space. They want to meet others. Um, they want to see that excitement. And so just, you know, joining some discords and, you know, trying to, you know, start some conversations or get involved in conversations or, you know, in our case, you know, maybe you join a hackathon and don't build anything, but you just come to some workshops to learn. Uh, things like that um, are, are a great way to kind of, you know, dip your toes in or you just listen to some Twitter spaces like this um, and, you know, <laughs> use that as, as a starting point. And, a lot of people in, that I've seen in DAOs and these communities do have full-time jobs elsewhere, um, and they're just trying to, you know, kind of, kind of meet some people and, uh, you know, just dip their toes in before they, you know, fully dive into the Web three space. Fantastic. I think Santiago had something to say. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll ask it afterwards. I know, I know we're at time, and, and the question might go too deep <laughs> for this conversation. But no, this is incredible, Connor. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all the opportunities. Um, I uh, yeah, it's incredible to learn about all the all the ways people can get involved. You know, obviously on Gitcoin specifically, but in other in other platforms as well. It's just I you know when we were doing the Gorg bounties, it, it's you know you look at other projects and the bounties um, and the you know the incentive mechanisms they're providing builders for their platform, and it's like wow, there's there's a lot. There's you know you can really you can step in anywhere, like you said, from UI UX to development to kernel work to, you know, whatever, whatever kind of tickles your fancy. So yeah, great, great stuff. Um, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, yeah. If anyone does have any more questions, like feel free to just DM me on Twitter or, you know, hop in the Gitcoin discord, happy to, uh, chat, you know, wherever. Um, but yeah, come, uh, come take a look and it, you know, if you're working on a project, consider opening up a grant for it. Um, if, you know, you just want to learn and meet people, uh, you know, hop in the community, maybe join some events, uh, but there, there's tons of opportunities and, um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Tons of opportunities.